kind of rest that the world couldn't ever offer. Rest that taps me in the back, reminding me that you are God. The God who loves me all the same, despite all sorrow and shame. Let my feet step into the solid ground, this sure foundation, a place where I can walk and rest and walk again, a place of grace. It's a happy resurrection Sunday, sabi nga nila. Sige, pakabati uli yung mga katabi ninyo. Hindi lang tayo nag ano, no? nagbabatian lang dito, but we're really declaring what we believe right now. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, buhay si Lord. Yan, okay. Sige, kailangan natin talaga sabihin yan. Kasi minsan pagka nakatutok tayo sa mga problema natin, buhay si Lord. <laughs> talaga ba? Buhay ba talaga si Lord? Ang tagal ko ng single, Lord. Buhay ka ba talaga? Yan. So, but we just need, okay. <laughs> Sabi ni Thor, di ba? Ready ka na ba bukas? Bakit? Ano ba gagawin ko bukas? Wala naman akong trabaho. Okay, so, ready na ako tumambay, God. Okay, buhay si Lord. Okay, so, but then again, we're, we're just wanna, we just, we're saying, we're confessing that because that's really the reality uh, of our faith, no? Na itong Sunday na to, celebrate natin, hindi lang dahil, yay, patapos na ang bakasyon. Okay, babalik, babalikan na naman tayo sa mga kanya-kanyang mga trabaho or kung may paso kayo. But really, we're celebrating the foundation of our faith. I would like to start with this, ano, ano, with this picture that Jesus is alive. And the place of grace that we're talking about here is these two places that we all know from the story. Okay, the empty cross and then the empty tomb. That is what we see right now. Whenever we're recalling, ano ba yung nangyari no? sa krus ng Kalbaryo? At pagkatapos ng tatlong araw siya ay nabuhay, according sa scriptures, the tomb is empty. Ngayon, ito yung pag-uusapan natin. Ah, para saan yun? Sabi nga nila, eh ano ngayon? Di ba? Bakit? Bababa ba yung kuryente namin pagkatapos ko makinig dito? Di ba? Di ba? I mean, sometimes we just wanna see things and Kala kasi natin, di ba, pag, uh, you know, we, we go to these kinds of places, the church, the spiritual aspect of our life, so to speak, we see that, but does it really have a connection with how I live today? If you're a Christian, um, of course, we, sino ba dito, mahal niyo si Lord Cristiano ka? Yay, ayan. Yay, praise God, dumadami na. <laughs> yung mga nasa taas, okay ba tayo dyan? Okay, mas malapit daw kayo kay Lord dyan, no? So, but anyways. Ay, anyways, babatiin ko muna yung mga, sorry. Dumiresyo na ako, but gusto ko lang batiin yung mga nasa online, yung mga nasa overflow natin, okay? We are all together worshiping God and hearing God's word right now. At yung mga nasa Garden of Ian, nako, medyo mainit na po sa labas. Lord, okay, hindi naman to itong, ano, ano ba? Parang, ito ba yung impyerno? Hindi, joke lang. So, wag naman, okay? I'm, I'm kidding, but again, napakainit lang. Sana nakasilong yung iba dyan, no? Para hindi naman sila maano, mauhaw, okay, ma-dehydrate. But then again, if you're a Christian, this is something that we really look at to because this is the foundation of our belief. Sabi nga ni Paul, kung wala tong, ano na to, wala tong, hindi totoo tong resurrection na to, in Tagalog, naglulokohan lang tayo. Sabi ni Paul, umuwi na lang tayo. Ba't pa tayo gagastos? Magpapaganito pa tayo? Bo, patay naman si Lord eh. Parang we're just, according to Paul, this is Paul, I mean, I'm just paraphrasing in that sense. I'm just paraphrasing what Paul is saying in his, in, in his writings that if Christ didn't raise from the dead, then we're all to be pitied by, pitied by everyone. Parang pareho lang tayo. We're still in our sins. But, According to all the witnesses who have seen Jesus Christ lived, suffered and died, lived again. It's true. 2,000 years after, we're still proclaiming it. And this message has been changing people's lives. Another thing that I would like to also mention, bago ako pumunta dun sa <clears throat> latter part ng story ng resurrection, is that if you are, again, first time here, or maybe you just came back. I just want to say, welcome back. Okay. Uh, nagpakalala na ba ako? Ako po pala si Pastor Jojit. So, uh, two and five, no? <laughs> Kasi mahaba tong preaching na to. Aabot ako hanggang five o'clock. <laughs> Pakasin, si Pastor Jojit. Oh, Pastor Daniel pala. Sorry, Pastor Daniel. Uh, one of the pastors dito sa 2 p.m. No? Uh, again, if you're first time here, you just came back. Welcome back here in the church. But one of the things that I'm 
I'm praying and while I was preparing for this message, I was asking God, would you open up everyone's heart to once again see that the message that you have in the empty cross and in the empty tomb really emptied the power of sin and death sa mga buhay natin. Ano ngayon yung implication nan sa bawat isa? Ngayon, basahin natin sa John chapter 21. So if you have the Bibles with you, buksan natin doon, John chapter 21. I'll be reading verse 1 hanggang 19. And then I'll be explaining lang some of the theological truths. Ito kailangan talaga natin mga guests. Tayo mga Pilipino kasi nasanay tayo na ano, no? yung sumasabay lang tayo sa, ano, sa okasyon. Yung parang, oh, ito na yun, ito na yun. Tapos, ano ba talaga yung nangyari sa resurrection? That is something that we need to know. And what does... Does it imply now, now that we're following Christ? And now that we are somehow as a Christian, we also feel, tama ba? Some struggles? Meron pa ba ditong nag-struggle? Bawala na. Adi ko kunin na kayo. Malapit na to. Okay, so, the joke lang. Okay. Pag may struggle ka kasi, di ba, nandito pa tayo sa mundo eh, di ba? So, ano ba to? Uh, Lord, I want to do it. You know, I want to obey you. I want to honor you. But... <laughs> Ito yung pangangailangan. Ito yung, ito, yung, ito yung nararamdaman. So, we feel that how does the empty cross and the empty tomb speak to those kinds of situations in our lives? Basahin natin John chapter 21. So, kung nakatingin kayo sa akin kasi wala kayong mga Bibles, maki, ano na kayo, makisilip na lang kayo. Ano ba yung John chapter 21? Okay, basahin natin. I'll be reading from ESV version. After this, after this, Jesus revealed Himself Again, so mamaya i-expound natin itong mga words na to. Again, to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he rebuilt himself in the way, in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, that is James and John, mga fishermen to mga to, no? Uh, and, that, and two others of his disciples. Grabe, hindi na na-mention. Sabi ng mga iba, ba't hindi man lang sinabi pangan? Sana sinulat mo na rin, okay? I- ibig sabihin, sinasabi lang ni John dito, many to mention, okay? But mga disciples, nakita-kita doon, nagpakita si Lord sa kanila. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Wala na naman silang nakuha. Verse 4, Just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Verse 5, Jesus said to, to them, Children, in other translation, young men, even other translation, friends, iba-iba, no? But pretty much, children or young men, ito yung sinasabi ni Jesus. Do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Again, mga fishermen to mga to, alam nila yung ginagawa nila, but then Jesus was instructing them to cast the net on the right side. Why? Because they're casting the net on the wrong side. Galing kay Pastor Rev yun. Pastor Rev, I just borrowed your joke. So, patay pa rin siya sa 2 o'clock. Sorry. Anyways... <laughs> Pastor Rev, thank you. It didn't work. Sorry. Okay. Sabi ni Pastor Rev, why did it, they didn't get? Because they cast it on the wrong side. Okay, sige. Hi. Thank you, Lord, kay Pastor Rev. Pagpalain niyo po siya. Alright. Now, okay. Saan na ba ako? Verse, uh, verse 5. Children, do you have any fish? They answered no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. Verse 7. That disciple whom Jesus loved, malalaman natin kung sino yun, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, about, but about a hundred yards off. Then they got out on the land. They saw a charcoal fire in place. The fish laid out on it and bread. Verse 10. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have that you have just caught. Some, so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled, hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 100 
53 of them. Maybe lang. Mukhang in-accounting nila to. Okay? And although they were so many, the nets was not torn. Verse 12, Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Sino ba dito breakfast people? Raise up your hands. Konti lang. IF kayo, ganyan. IF, in terms of, oh, sige. Eh, si Jesus nagbe-breakfast. So, nagbe-breakfast ako. <laughs> just comment ko lang yun. Sorry, may commentary habang nagbabasa tayo ng Bible. But, you know, just to make the word, you know, because the word is alive, okay? Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after that, after he was raised from the dead. Verse 15, maybe you know this story. Made, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Or in other translation, protect my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, this is Jesus. When you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. Verse 19, this, this he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. Last phrase. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Let's pray together. Panginoon, salamat. With the time that we have and with the celebration of this Sunday, we just want to declare again, you are alive in all situations. And Lord, would you move right now in our midst? Would you speak right now? And because you are alive right now, I, we know and we believe that your spirit, God, is ministering to many of us. Whatever situation, may, maybe some of them, they're thinking, anong kinalaman nito sa buhay ko ngayon? I pray, God, that Lord, you will touch all of us right now as we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, everyone say, Amen, Amen. Just a quick context. Well, not really that quick kasi baka abutin tayo ng 30 minutes kakakwento. Ano ba nangyari prior to this? Again, nabanggit ni John that this is the third time. Which means, pangatlong beses. Parang inulit ko. <laughs> Ang lalim pastor, ha? Okay, so. Which means, pangatlong beses na, ba? So may nauna, may una, dalawa. But just to let you know, okay, the story, as we know it, Jesus died on the cross on a Friday. Mga around alas tres, okay? Namatay siya. At after three days, nabuhay siyang muli. And by the way, the first people who discovered that Jesus was alive were not Peter, James, and John. They were women. All the women in the house say, Amen. All the single ladies. All the... Iba yon, iba yon. Sorry. Iba namang kate, okay. But women, what does that mean? Ano implication ng that the women discovered first the truth of the resurrection? Here's what we can say about that. If the resurrection is true, I don't think the writer will begin saying that the women were the first one to discover it. Why? Because nung panahon nila, yung testimony ng isang babae ay hindi valid. So kung magsisimula ka at i-explain mo, alam mo, totoo to si Jesus Christ na nabuhay siyang muli. Sino nakadiscover? Si Maria. Ah, wala to. Kalokohan to. Diba? Because in their, in their, sorry, in their context yun. Of course, now we know 2024, that is not true anymore. Because of the value, because of, you know, again, uh, we're talking about the equality and all of those. those are, that's now the reality. But 2,000 plus years ago, ang mga babae, they are considered second-class citizens, so to speak, object in the, in the family. So wala talaga silang bosses. Now the scripture is saying, the truth of the resurrection were first discovered by women. It's a very powerful picture. Why? Because it's saying it's not based on men. It's based on the power of God. And the people then who is writing this are not, are not making this up. Because kung gagawa ko ng magandang story, para paniwalaan nyo, uunahin ko sila Pedro. And then Peter, James, and John first discovered it. Why? Because the testimony of this man 
might give a good detail of it. But to say that the women saw it first speaks, Bakit kaya? So the authenticity is something that we can discover from here. Another context is this. When you talk about the, when you talk about the resurrection, Jesus did not resurrect in spirit. Galangan natin mag to. Kasi yung John chapter 21 is not a dream. It's not, hindi siya apparition. Yung alam mo yung parang at nagpakita ang Panginoon. Ito, lumulutan sila. Walang pa. Alam mo yung mga Hindi ganun. Tao to. Paano natin nalaman na, ano, na flesh yung, ano nila, yung, yung kausap nila. Bakit? Kumakain eh. Come, let's have breakfast. Para kita mo, kumulto yung kumakain. Nalaglag din yung, ano. Ah, mumu siya. Okay, so alam mo lang, di ba? But now, the disciples are saying, oh, this, this is not an apparition. The, you know, the scripture is clear that when we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's a bodily and a literal resurrection coming from death to life. Yung parang katabi mo, pag hinawakan mo, buhay yan, di ba? Pero kung nakita mo yung katabi mo na dating Nasa ka ba? Ang kakahapon eh. Okay, so parang kakabahan ka naman. Buhay ka ba talaga? Pak, sinampal mo pang ganun. So, buhay to. That is the truth about the resurrection. And ano yung impact niyan sa mga disciples? Simula natin because eto na, nagka-encounter sila. At this, Jesus revealed himself. Kanino? Kay Peter, sa mga disciples, saying this is what? A bodily resurrection. But here's another thing that we can see. After the revealing, and I would like to say, say this, no? Yung first and second is a per, very powerful uh, appearance of Jesus. Why? Because the first and second appearance, they were in a room locked. Bakit sila nakalock? Because they still feel the sense of uh, threat, death threat para sa kanila kasi tinutugis din sila ng mga, mga Romans, no? And then Jesus came in into the room and then he greeted them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yung unang apparition, eh, not apparition, sorry. Yung unang, ano, hindi apparition, yung unang pagpapakita ni Lord, physical, wala si Thomas. Pero ginirit na nila, peace be with you. Pakipati ngayon yung katabi mo, peace be with you. Ayan, no? ito sa, sa katabi mo, no? peace be with you. Then, sige, sabi, tapos yung kumayon lang, ayan. Parang, parang familiar pastor. Okay, so, so, eh, di, because, nasa Bible naman, nasa Bible naman, they greeted one another, peace be with you. Okay? That you know what? You are troubled. You are in fear because you know a lot of things are going on. The Lord came into their room, spoke to them. Peace be with you. Si Thomas hindi siya naniwala, di ba? Alala niya yan. Pinahawak niya yung mga kamay niya, tsaka yung sugat niya dito. Wakan mo. My Lord, my God. That His peace came from knowing physically who Jesus is. But Jesus said, blessed are those who did not see. Yet they believe. So sabi mo sa katabi mo, alam mo, bless ka. Bless ka. But the third appearance is a little bit different because it, it puts a question in my mind while I was preparing for this. Sabi kasi ni Peter, and again, mind you, nagpakita na si Lord ah. Nakita na ni Peter, James, John, lahat mga disciples, si Jesus. So you're talking about, wow, so totoo nga yung sinasabi mo, Lord, that you will suffer, you will die, and after three days you will rose again. Amen. Siguro kung nandudun ka, para ito na yun, ito na yung, ito na yung kingdom, okay? Ang sabi ni Peter, I'm going fishing. Balik tayo. Balik tayo sa simula. Bakit sinabi yun? Well, first and foremost, dati siyang fisherman. We all know that. They said to him, we will go with you. Many of them are also fishermen. Ang busy sila dati, fishermen sila. They went out and got into the boat, but the night, they caught nothing. I was thinking, Peter, nakita mo na eh. What made you think that... Peace be with you, narinig ko naman. Nakita mo si Thomas, hinawakan niya yung Oo, nakita ko rin yun. But after days of seeing that, he made the decision, balik na lang siguro ako. What do we see there? Yes, Peter saw. 
the reality of Jesus' presence, physical, literal resurrection. But he also saw his guilt and limitation. May guilt siya. To the point na, oh, totoo nga si Lord. Pero totoo din na dininay ko siya. And that is so hard for Peter. And maybe many of us, the reality is, we can know and we can actually see all of these things. You know, mean, Lord, I praise and worship. Ako, nag, nag, uh, nagbabasa ako ng Bible. Praise God. Diba? Tiro ba di nagbabasa ko yung Bible? Wala. Okay, so. Anong gagawin natin? Okay, so. <laughs> Nagpipray naman ako. Umati naman ako ng church. Okay yung attendance ko. I'm going to my victory group. Wala na. Okay, so. Lord, diba? Lahat naman yun. It's just that what guilt makes you how, how guilt makes you feel is that even if you do all of those things, it still makes you feel far away from the Lord. And you're trying to do a lot of things hoping that that gap will be closer. It's just that, tama ba? Hindi pa rin nag-work eh. Di ba? Nag-fasting ka na. Hindi na, hindi na nga ako kumain ng isda. Ginupit-gupit ko na lang. Di ba? Nalala yung picture na yun. Di ba? Parang ginupit mo yung, yung steak. Di ba? Ginawa mo isda. Para Lord, ginawa ko naman lahat. But why do I feel like, maybe that's what, or not maybe, but I think that's what Peter was thinking or feeling. There was guilt and there was limitation in the sense that, Lord, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm seeing you now. Thank you. Praise God. You're real. But in terms of following you, I'm not sure. Have you ever asked yourself after failing once or twice? Or even if you, I mean, you're saying, tinatry ko naman maging kristyano. I'm not sure if I'm ready for this. O baka yung iba sa inyo, ayaw nyo. Kasi I'm not really ready for it. Ano, Lord? Nakikita naman kita. Nakikita ko naman yung mga alive, alive. Mga gano, nakikita ko naman yan. Nakikita ko naman yung, wow, the prayers, you know, and all of the readings and the scripture. Nakikita ko yan. All of that. But I just, I just don't know how to really get close. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready. May plano si Lord. Sa mga kata- taong katulad nun. Kasi may ginawa siya kay Peter. And I feel like, if you're in that situation right now, the Lord is bringing you somewhere where the Lord will bring you somewhere that is closer to Him. Sabi ni uh, Jesus do, sa kanila, Children, do you have any fish? No. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Do you remember where this ano, situation happened the first time? Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, if you would... Okay, pwede nyo buksan mamaya. Luke chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 4. Remember when Jesus started calling His disciples? Ito yun. Ano yung ginagawa na Jesus dito? He's bringing His disciples into a memory lane. Galing, no? Total, nandiyo dyan na kayo. Sabi ni Lord, sesetupin ko ito, itong mga taong ito. May setup siya doon sa situation na yun. Na I'm bringing my disciples right now where we all started. And you know what? Somehow, if you feel like you're too far away from God, I believe the Lord is also bringing you there. Ano nga ba yung kanta kanina? Back to your heart. That's a powerful song a while ago. And it felt like it was a song of Peter to Jesus in that sense. Because when he was realizing this story panning out before his eyes, may ginagawa si Lord. And maybe you feel like you're so far away from God. Online, sa online ka, ayoko nga pumunta dyan eh. Kasi di ba, nasaktan na ako eh. Church hurt or kung ano man, ayoko na dito sa church kasi ang dami ko na narinig, parang hindi naman ganito, hindi naman ganyan. Lord, but the Lord is bringing Peter and all of the disciples into a memory lane right now. Jesus is reminding them of the miraculous catch. And then from there, Jesus said, follow me. Probably, the Lord is also reminding them 
of what he said in John chapter 15. I am the branch, oh no, I am the vine, you are the branches. Remember this part, apart from me, you cannot do or you can do nothing. Because at the end of that catching, they were not able to catch any fish. Until the Lord came and said, ilagay niyo sa kanan. Kasi nga, mal- uh, anyways, namatay na nga yung joke na yan. Okay, wag na natin balikan. Patay na. Si Jesus lang ang nag-resurrect. Yung joke, hindi. Okay, so. And then what happened? After that, the disciples, when Je- whom Jesus loved, who is that? That is Apostle John. Okay, ito, si- syempre si John yung nagsusulat. Or, I mean, one of the writers of John is saying, the, apo- the disciple whom Jesus loved. Pakisabi na, kasi i-quote na lang natin. Pakisabihin naman nila, napaka, uh, ano ko, diba? napaka bidabida ko naman dito. Okay, so, Pero yun yung tingin ni John sa kan, ni, yun yung tingin ni John sa sarili niya when it comes to his relationship with the Lord. The Lord loves him so much. So the disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it, heard that it was the Lord, he puts on his outer garment for he was stripped for his work and threw himself into the sea. What can we see here? John was considered the apostle of love and Peter was considered a man of faith in the latter days of their ministry. But look at what he has done, or what Peter, or John, so to speak, yung unay muna natin si John, what John experienced because he was embraced by the love of Jesus, by the love of God in his life, despite of the darkest situations that he has experienced, he has seen the Lord from afar. Nabi, no? And I want to encourage you, Sometimes, the situations that you will be in will be full of darkness, will be full of pain, will be full of confusion and chaos. And sometimes you're praying, Lord, matatapos ba to? But sometimes the Lord will just allow you to be there. Because when Jesus enters into that situation, His love will be the only thing that can open your eyes to see Him. I am here. Sabi mo si, sa katabi mo, kasama mo si Lord. But also for Peter, because he's called a man of faith. Look what a man of faith has done. When he heard it, he immediately ran to Jesus. Grabe, no? Yun yung faith natin. Faith, when we talk about faith, it's not just faith that I believe. I just heard and then I'll go home. I mean, oh, okay na yan. Alam ko buhay si Lord. E ano ibig sabihin nun? Ewan ko. E yun yung sabi sa kapa ng pastor, eh. Nag-guess mo ba? Hindi ko rin alam. Basta sabi, buhay daw si Lord. Alive, alive. So nag-alive, alive daw sila. Okay na yun. But when you believe who Jesus is in your life, you started following His direction. Yun yung ginawa ni Peter. A man of faith started following Jesus. And yun nangyari after. And when they got out of the land, they saw a charcoal of fire. Ito na. Memory lane. Remember this? What happened days before? The disciples ran away. Peter denied him three times. And according to, to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 14, I'm sorry. It was done in a place with campfire. Again, binabalikan. Binabalik lang ni Lord. By the way, just to let you know, ito yung mga bagay na dinaanan ninyo. But this time, I'm walking with you. Not just walking, you know, uh, ano lang to, yung parang feel nyo lang, spirit lang ni Lord. Ne, ne, ne. Jesus was walking with them physically because the one who called them is alive. Nakagano na kayo sa akin. Parang, Pastor, ano ba ibig sabihin ng itong mga to? Yan. Buhay si Lord. Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And ano yung sinabi niya rito? So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the, hauled the net ashore full of large fish. Come and have what? Breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. When I was looking at this situation, I was thinking, man, ano kaya yung nakikita ni Peter dito? Kasi nakikita niya apoy. I was just imagining when he's, he's seeing the, the fire and he's seeing Jesus. And then he's reminded, I do not know you. And then he said that three times, I do not know you. Eh, siguro nakagano na lang siya, titignan si Lord. 
I do not know you. Alam mo ba? Lord, pa kaya tayo dito? Kumakain, tas kumakain sila ng breakfast. Maybe reminding them as well of the Last Supper. So habang binabasa ko to, Lord, ano, ano ba to? Ito ba yung last breakfast? Okay, so, kasi may last supper, then may last breakfast. But here's what I'm getting from this situation. Jesus is reminding them of what Jesus has taught on the last supper, love one another. That's one of the things. And Jesus is reminding them of the love and the forgiveness that he has given while he was alive and while on the cross. I was just thinking, Jesus could have said this habang kumakain sila. I told you. I told you. You people of, wala kayong ka-faith, faith. I mean, if, if Jesus has spoken that, pag binasa ko yun, tapos gumulon si Jesus, isipin ko, tama naman. Diba? Parang, Si Jesus yun eh, magra-rant siya. Diba? Magpo-post siya sa Instagram niya. I told you, I told you, I told you. I'm alive. Okay? So, pwede naman. Diba? Pwede siyang mag And if you, if you look back, what they have done, it's valid. Pwede niya, ikaw, ikaw, hindi ka naniwala. Ikaw, tumakbo ka. Ikaw, kung ano yung sinabi mo, sinabi ko sa inyo, ganyan, ganyan. Pwede niya gawin niyon. But Jesus is showing here Grace. How would a, an innocent man eat, eat with people who have betrayed him or denied him? Grabe, no? Tayo nga eh, pagkakatabi na natin. Ano church pa? Masunog sana siya. Okay, mga ganun. Alam mo yung mga ganun, talaga, nag-church yan? Eh, kahapon lang. Diba, diba, diba pagkaalam natin yung story ng tao, it is parang, Talaga, ba't ka nandito? Di ba? Uy, nandito ka sa church. Parang, but, but for Jesus, the people that he's eating with are the people who denied him. Ran away. Di ba? Iniiwan ka. Pero parang, may mga barkada ka, may mga kaibigan ka, iniiwan ka at the, at the lowest part of your life. And now you're eating with them. I call that place the place of grace. That despite of their imperfection, the Lord commune and connected with them. Ang powerful na moment na yan. Ito rin yung gusto kong sabihin before we zoom in to Peter. That maybe you feel like you're so far away and the Lord will not be able to reach you. But look at the breakfast moment. He's so willing to be with you. Bagalan ko lang doon kasi baka inisip niya talaga. Oo. Kahit na ganun kalala. Eh, ganun si Lord eh. That's how merciful God is. That's how powerful God is. That's how loving God is. That's what you call grace. But at this point, at this point, Jesus will now zoom in to Peter. Ito na yun. When they finished, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? More than these? You more than these, sabi niya, more than dun sa, ito na nga, tinatry mong bumalik sa pagfishing mo. Do you love me more than this? Your friends, the fishes that you're gathering, maybe you want to go back to your old business. Do you love me more than this? There are two words here. There's one word love, but there, but in Greek, dalawa yung, ano nito, dalawa yung, uh, dalawa yung word na ginamit dito. When Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? The love that Jesus was saying here in Greek means this. Do you agape? Have you ever heard of the word agape? Agape, me. And then Peter responded, yes, Lord, you know that I, it's not agape, it's not love, but, Tinanslate kasi sa English. So, isa lang yung word ng English when it comes to love. So, but in Greek, iba-iba ng kinds yun. Isang eh, agape, yung sinasabi ni Peter, Yes, Lord, you know that I phileo. Or in English, you know that I feel ya. Okay, so, I feel you, Lord. I feel ya. I don't, uh, agape kasi means, sorry. Na- na-realize ka lang. Medyo slang si Peter, I feel ya, Lord. I feel ya. Yeah, yeah, bro, I feel you. Okay, so, pero 
Agape, in essence, means this, unconditional love. A divine, unconditional, looking at the, the, the value and the worth of the person despite of the feeling. Yung phileo kasi, it's a brotherly love that is more inclined to passion, feelings. So, sinasabi ni Peter dito, Lord, you know. Ano ibig sabihin? Nagbago yung tono niya. Because last week, Mark 14, sinabi niya, even if they would deny you, I won't. Ba? Tapang niya. Kasi sabi ni Lord sa kanila, all of you will fall away. Sabi niya, ako? Ako? Sinabihan niyo? Okay, so, sabi niya, pero nagbago na siya dito. Narealize niya. Ramdam ko yung happiness dito. <laughs> Parang iba ta. Talagang happy-happy yung mga tao dito. Okay, sige. Gusto natin niya. Okay. Pero nagbago yung tono niya. Last week, he said, I will never. Eto, tinanong na ni Lord, do you love me? Do you love me unconditionally? You know. You know that. May sagot ako, but you know. When Peter was confronted with the grace of God, he also realized his guilt and his limitations. It humbled him. That's why he said, you know, and the kind of love that I can only give you, Lord, kung ako lang talaga to, I can only give you this kind of love, a brotherly one, not the agape one. Pero yung sinasabi ni Jesus, okay, feed my lambs. O may babalikan natin yan. Second time, do you agape me? Yun yung sinasabi, ulit na naman, sabi, sabi ni Peter, uh, Andy, paulit-ulit ba ito? <laughs> Lord, ilang tanong, limahan ba ito, tatluhan? Okay. Do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know, I only delay you. Tend <laughs> or protect my sheep. Because last week, Mark 14, the kind of passion, the kind of willingness that Peter is willing to do for the Lord, sabi niya, I will die for you. I will give everything for you. Lord, papa tayo, sasaksakin ko, tutut, kagayin ko yung tingo nito. Hmm, di ba? Naalala yung story na yun, yung tinagay yung tinga. Tapos ginawang ano, sinisig. <laughs> Pilipino yun, pagka yung mga ganong kwento. Ah, kilala ko yan, oh. De, joke lang. So, so di ba? Tapos sabi ni Jesus, hindi ganyan, Peter. Hmm, okay. Malike. Okay, so, kinorek niya si Peter, sabi ni Jesus, hindi ganyan yung kingdom natin. Okay, hinil niya. Okay, why? Because Peter was so passionate was so into fighting for God, he was doing it in his own terms. Now Jesus is saying, do you love me? You know, Lord, that I can only fillet you, you at the level of that I can. But Jesus is saying, now you love me, not in your own terms, but in my terms. That before, you want to kill, you want to protect me. You want to do things for me. Well, you know what? If you really love me, I want you to serve people. I want you to feed people. Feed my lambs and feed my, protect my sheep means this, that the people of God will be served. The people who will know the Lord will, will feel the care and the love of Christ. Mamaya, babasahin natin yun. In First Peter, ano ba yung sinabi ni Peter doon? But basically, what Jesus is saying, this is my way this is the direction that I want you to go to, not your direction. If you say you really love me, parang kanta yun, okay. But Jesus said this, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Tend, protect my sheep. And then last but not least, he said to him the third time, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. Feed. Feed my lambs. When I was preparing for this, I Lord, Rabbi Lord, no? Why didn't you say, Peter, I forgive you? It's na, di ba? I love you, I love you pa si Lord. Diba? Do you love me more than Eh? Parang inisip ba natin, pinapag-guilty ba ni Lord? Gini-guilt trip ba ni Jesus si Peter? I don't think so. 
I don't think so. Why did he just say, Peter, I forgive you? That's it. Okay na yan. Balik ka na. To be honest, I really don't know. Siyempre, hindi naman ako si Jesus. I might think, Jesus, hindi ako si Jesus. Peter, I just want you to know, I love you and I forgive you. But he didn't say it that way. But Jesus was so clear about how Jesus treated Peter. It was so clear, he can't deny how the Lord loved him so much. And he was so merciful despite of the denials that he has given him at the lowest point of Jesus Christ. He ate with him. He talked with him. The Lord even asked him, do you love me? Hindi yun guilt trip. It was actually a leading from the memory lane. Alam mo naman na hindi mo kaya. But you know what? Now that I am with you and I will send the Holy Spirit with you, there will come a time Katulad ng sinabi mo sa Mark 14, you will really die for me. That's true. But this time, you will do it with the right position of your heart. I just felt like was, I was preparing for this. This is what the Lord is trying to say to all of us. When we talk about how the Lord dealt with Peter, he could have ju- just judged them and say, Grabe kayo, no? Okay, from this point on, be a better disciple. Okay? Okay, tara na, alis na tayo. Pwede naman, di ba? O next time, magbasa-basa rin kayo ng Bible, ha? Kaya nyo na yan. Pwede naman, di ba? But he's just said it this way. From now on, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. He was just bringing them back. So by God's grace, for all of us, when you talk about the grace of God, The Lord's, the grace of God is actually calling us back. Calling us back to follow Him once again. I don't know what's your experience as a Christian. Maybe you were discouraged for quite some time and maybe you were going through some tough times in your life. And you made a decision that you understand. Grabe Lord, no? I know it dishonored you. But the grace of God is calling you. It's time to go back. It's time to go back. Let's all stand up. I just want to pray right now. If that is you, you're a follower of Jesus, you're a Christian, I would like to make a call for these two people, for two kinds, two sets of situation. You're saying, oh man, for the past maybe months or years, I just know you, Lord but I'm not really following you. The grace of God also calls you to turn away from your sins and to turn to Jesus. That's the other part. But I would like to focus right now on the followers of Jesus. If you're saying, Lord, this is between me and you. I know I've been struggling for quite some time. But his death His resurrection emptied the power of sin and death in my life. The Lord is calling you back. If that is you, I just want to pray for you. If you're saying, Lord, I'm going back to you. Going back to you. This is not about heaven. We're not talking about heaven. I'm just saying, you just, the Lord is calling you back. Jesus said at the end of this verse, Follow me. Balik ka lang. Paano yung guilt ko? Iwan mo sa akin. That is you. All eyes open. Just raise up your hand. I just want to pray for you. We just want to pray for you. Thank you, God. Yung mga nasa overflow, may mga prayer teams tayo dyan. Just raise up your hands. Maybe someone can approach you as well. Later on. Lord, salamat po. As we all see, God, yung mga nakataas ng kamay, It's an act of humility. Lord, and you do not disdain this act, God. Saying, God, I just want to go back to you. (sighs) So hard, but your grace gives me strength. The same grace, the same power that 
Embrace you, Jesus. It's the same power right now that you're experiencing from death to life. Lord, thank you, God, that even as you're seeing God, the hands being raised, you're also seeing their hearts saying, God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I want to go back. Bring me back, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the restorative power that they're experiencing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that there's no guilt that will pull them back and make them even feel, God, that, Lord, you're far away, even at this moment, God. Lord, you're telling them, I am the God who saved you. I am near. I'm God Emmanuel. I'm the one who loved you, forgave you, and redeemed you. Panginoon, salamat po. For those who prayed that, God, they're saying, Lord, I just want to declare this, God. Lord, thank you, God, for your love and your peace being with them. You can put down your hands. If this is you, you're saying, God, I want to surrender my life to you. Never, never been a Christian in that sense. I know. I don't have a relationship with you, God. If that is you, you're saying, God, wala naman talaga, I don't do it. But now I'm, there's just a knock in your heart saying, God, you're calling me. You're calling me to turn away from my sin. I don't know how to do that right now. But you're calling me. If that is you, you want to surrender your life to the Lord. This is what the gospel has spoken, that he lived, he died to pay for the penalty of your sins. So that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but you will have eternal life. Not, in, not when you die, but even today. Today, you can receive the eternal life that you have in Christ. If that is you, you're saying, I'm surrendering my life to the Lord. Please raise up your hands. We just want to pray for you. This is your moment. This is your time between the Lord in your life right now. God salamat. Yes, I've seen that hands raised. Yes, some of you. That's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're not here for the numbers. We're just here. It's not an accident that you're here. We're just going to wait. Lord, thank you. Thank you for surrender. For this moment, this is a time of surrendering to you, God. You know, this prayer does not save you. I always say that. But this prayer is something that has been happening in your heart that you want to confess. But it is the Lord who is, who can save you. Who is saving you right now. Just pray this after me. Lord Jesus, I repent from all of my sins. Change my heart, O Lord. I submit to you. And Lord, from this point on, I will follow you. Lord, help me to hear your voice. Help me, Lord God, to read and love your word. And thank you, Jesus, for the new life, fresh life that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Palakpakan naman natin si Lord. If you pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Um, we don't want you to just stay and then parang, oh, sige, yun yun. But we want to walk with you. We want to pray for you. And we want to lead you and guide you in that decision. What does it mean for you now to live a life with Jesus Christ? But let's all pray right now together. Can you just lift up your hands? Panginoon, salamat. Even as we end this service, Panginoon. Salamat. Your grace and your mercy abounds, God. Even in the midst of our failures, thank you, God, that you're empowering your people Oh God, to live a pure and holy life empowered by your Spirit. And God, even as we go back, God, to our places, God, to our workplace, family, kusan yung mga kami tinawag, Panginoon, salamat, Panginoon, your, your, your power is moving in our midst, in our hearts, God. Lord, giving us the grace to say no to sin and giving us the grace, God, to bless many people, God. May the blessing of the Lord abound in the healing and the power and the grace of God abound in our lives, God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord uh, make His face shine upon you and give you peace. Oh God, salamat that you're empowering you people once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. 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 If you need prayers, May prayer team tayo. Staff natin are also here. Uh, God bless you. See you next week.
as you 